How does God speak to us today? Well, it's got a lot to do with God's Holy Spirit. So join me tonight for Church Online as we explore how to hear God's Holy Spirit with a particular focus on prophecy. Plus, we'll be trying a prophetic activity towards the end of the service to help us try and put some of this into practice. Hey what's up and welcome to Hope Family Church. My name is Rob and I'm the digital lead here which basically means I lead our social media channels as well as Church Online. So welcome to Church Online. So for the last few weeks we've been exploring how to hear God in different ways such as through prayer, through the Bible and through Jesus himself. And along the way we've done a couple of what we call prophetic activities to help us to try and actually hear God for ourselves. And so today we're going to explore how to hear God's Holy Spirit with a particular focus on prophecy. So just to get us started and to get us chatting and getting and getting to know each other and stuff like that. Um, are you someone who's good at you know imagining or visualizing things? Why don't you let me know in the comment section? Our reading today is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 1 to 11. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified. Now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction? Even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds, such as the pipe or the harp, how will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? So it is with you. Unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. Undoubtedly, there are all sorts of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, I am a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker is a foreigner to me. So it is with you. Since you are eager for gifts of the Spirit, try to excel in those that build up the church. So how does God speak to us today? 
at Church Online, we've been exploring how to hear God, and we've explored already how God speaks to us today through the Bible and through Jesus. Um, but God's voice isn't just confined to words He said before um, that have already been written down on a page for all of time. God still speaks afresh and anew today, and it's all about His Holy Spirit. You see, after Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, he returns to heaven uh, after promising us an advocate who will help us and be with us forever. And that's God's Holy Spirit. You know, it's first given to the disciples in Acts, in what we now call Pentecost. God's Holy Spirit is his way of always being with us and within us as we go about our daily lives. But the thing is, it's there to help us too. God's Holy Spirit brings a whole bunch of gifts to help us to uh, live as his followers, as his representatives on the earth, and as his church, as we live together and tell people about Jesus. You know, there are a bunch of gifts that come from the Holy Spirit, um, and they're listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, so a couple of chapters before what we read tonight. Um, they, those gifts of the Spirit are wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous power, prophecy, distinguishing spirits, speaking tongues, interpreting tongues. And you see, these are all about helping us um, to help each other. They're all about helping us to love each other and display God's love for one another and to build up the church, i.e. the collective group of people who follow Jesus, who follow God. Um, and so in the next chapter of 1 Corinthians, um, Paul, who basically wrote all that kind of stuff, um, explains that these are all about love. And then in the next chapter after that, again, chapter 14, which we read tonight, um, he says that we should desire the gifts of the Spirit, but especially prophecy. And that's because prophecy means passing on the voice and the will of God to each other. Notice the switch between um, hearing God for ourselves, for our own kind of um, our own lives and our own experiences, um, to actually hearing God for someone else so that we can pass on to them what God is saying and help them. So you see how, um, in particular, the gifts of the Spirit um, help us to help each other as part of God's church. Well, God continues to speak today because he loves us uh, and he wants to continue to look after us and sustain us and guide us. And so what that means is that we don't just have to be sustained um, by what God said in the past through the Bible, for example, because God continues to speak today through his spirit and especially through prophecy or the prophetic. You know, God is most likely speaking to you um, far more than you realize um, and, you know, actually will use everything to speak to us. And thankfully, um, because he loves us, he doesn't just stop speaking because, you know, we didn't notice it or we didn't hear him the first time. He keeps on speaking in different ways until we finally realize, until we finally catch his voice uh, and receive it and actually take it in. So are there any gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 um, which you're particularly desperate for at the moment? I'll put a list of them on screen to remind you. Just let me know which one in the comments section.
How do we hear God's Holy Spirit in the prophetic? You know, I mentioned already that God can and will use everything to speak to us. So how do we actually notice it? Well, first, let me tell you um, a couple of my own experiences of hearing God in the prophetic. So uh, a number of years back, I remember sitting around with um, a group of friends um, and we were really struggling with something that was going on at church, uh, in particular, knowing what to do about a situation that was happening there. Um, and we had this idea of what we what we felt like we should do, uh, but we weren't really sure. And so we asked God for a sign just to tell us if if that was the right thing to do, really, to affirm that. Um, now, in response um, to me and my friends asking for a sign from God, um, one of us got a sponsored advert on Facebook. Um, and I think it was from like a, a company trying to like get you to change broadband provider or something like that. And basically the ad was just this man holding a big wooden sign saying, this is a sign on it, um, which was honestly hilarious to us because we were like, no, surely not. Um, but we, you see, we could have missed that. Um, we could have dismissed that as nothing notable and gone, oh, well, that was just Facebook's ads doing it or whatever. It's just coincidence. Um, and alternatively, we might have been, we might have seen that and read more into it than was actually there. Um, but in all seriousness, I can't tell you how many times I've asked God for a sign and seen that same ad crop up on Facebook. And I've literally never seen it any other time than when I'd specifically asked God for a sign. So, you know, it really makes me laugh. And who knows, maybe God was speaking to us in this moment. Um, but I think there's a few things in particular to draw um, from our kind of uh, somewhat silly story of hearing God speak through this sign. Um, the first one is, is that we asked. You know, we're allowed to ask God to speak to us. We can ask God to speak to us. You know, we're allowed to do that. We're allowed to say, uh, God, speak to me, uh, give me a sign or something. Um, and in fact, this even happens in the Bible. So Samuel, um, who's a prophet in the Old Testament, does it uh, where he eventually prays, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. He's asking for the voice of God, asking God to speak to him um, so that he can hear what he's trying to say. And, and actually those exact words from, from that piece of scripture are something that I actually often begin my prayer time with when I'm trying to listen for God, uh, especially speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You can, you can ask God to speak to you. Secondly, well, once we've asked, we need to try and be attentive because, you know, God always speaks to us. It's just that he often speaks in the ordinary, um, which means we can miss it really easily. You know, beyond a random Facebook ad that says this is a sign, um, I've heard God speak to me in a whole bunch of pretty ordinary ways too, really, to be honest. Um, for example, you know, one of the most frequent ways that I hear God um, is through music. You know, I can't tell you how often God speaks to me um, through my worship playlist on Spotify when it's on Shuffle and Shuffle just brings up the song I really needed to hear and God speaks to me through that. Um, I've also heard God's voice um, through, you know, pictures or dreams and even once had him literally right in the clouds, kind of. Um, in that case, I was in that case, I was looking out the window while I was on the bus um, somewhere and I noticed that one of the clouds um, looked like a feather. Um, and then it was, it was really windy outside as well. And then a wind just blew this feather onto the side window of the bus right in front of my face. Uh, and so I, you know, and instantly in my head, um, the words of a psalm, I think it was Psalm 91, um, which talk about uh, protection and shelter under God's wings, under God's feathers or something, feathers like, I think it definitely mentions feathers. Um, that just kind of came to me. And, you know, I could have missed those things and gone, oh, it's just me drawing shapes in the cloud, um, or it's just a set of coincidences. Um, but I still had to pay attention and take note of those. And when something came, I kind of received it and kind of went, OK, well, maybe this is God. I'll take a look and just hear it anyway and reflect on it. Um, and the other thing is is that to mention that we kind of did and I did in those scenarios was um, take the risk and actually receive it. You know, take that risk instead of just dismissing it as, I don't know, a coincidence or just the thing that seemed to randomly happen. Um, actually receive it and say, this could be the voice of God. Uh, and I really want to stress the word could in particular, because, you know, we need to test and filter um, prophecies and words from people and then from God's Holy Spirit. Um, and we're going to touch on that in just a moment. Um, so what about you? Have you ever noticed a coincidence um, that perhaps seemed like it was more than a coincidence? What happened? Why don't you let me know in the comment section?
So how do we give or receive prophecy? Well, unfortunately, um, there are some people who abuse the gift of prophecy and try to manipulate what they've heard um, for their own selfish gain, or they even pretend they've heard something that they didn't. Um, alternatively, um, it might also be that we misunderstood what was being said, um, or we read more into it than was actually there. And so it's really important that when we hear the word of God through the Holy Spirit, through prophecy, um, we actually test and filter those prophecies to try and uh, work out if it really was God. So here's a little checklist um, which uses ABC um, on checking prophecy. A stands for affirming. Is it affirming? In 1 Corinthians chapters 12 to 14, um, and especially in 14, Paul points out that the purpose of all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and prophecy especially, is to reveal the love of God and help in the building up of his people and his church. And so in chapter 14 verse 3, he points out that prophecy must be to people for their strengthening, encouraging, uh, and comfort, and edifies them. So basically, when you receive God's word in prophecy, either to give it to someone else, um, or when you're receiving that from someone else, ask yourself, is it strengthening? Is it encouraging? Is it comforting? And does it build the person up? Secondly, uh, B stands for biblical. Is it consistent with what's said in the Bible? And by the way, not just a single verse taken out of context, but does it fit the general story, the general guidance, the and the kind of general information that the Bible holds? Um, if you receive something, you could search for it, for example, on Google and kind of say, you know, um, what does the Bible say? You know, where do feathers appear in the Bible to use my previous story? Um, and finally, C stands for Christ-like. Does it sound like something Jesus would say? Is it consistent with what Jesus says, the way Jesus acts, and what it is that Jesus teaches? And so if you hear God's voice through prophecy by his Holy Spirit, um, it must be affirming, it must be biblical, and it must be Christ-like, A, B, C. Uh, and you should run those checks quickly before you give prophecy to someone else, um, but also when you're receiving it from someone too. Uh, another tip for it in particular is to um, ask the opinion of someone you trust, um, like a faith leader or somebody who's gifted or experienced in the prophetic you know somebody does it regularly or has done it for some time you know things like that like a vicar for example um the other thing i would advise is is for you to weigh the risks involved you know what's the worst that could happen if you said this to someone so for example um if you think you've heard god tell you that a particular person over there is uh having an affair right Weigh that up carefully before you tell them, um, because you know if you say that to them or you know say that to their spouse, um, that's gonna that could cause some issues. So weigh that up, uh, and if you're not sure, I'd really suggest talking to your vicar um, or a faith leader or someone like that to get their advice. But if the risk is low, and you just let's say you have a picture of I don't know a man falling off his bike. Um, then what harm is that going to do just telling someone, oh, I just had a picture from God from you where you fell off your bike uh, and this happened. You know, that's that's really low risk. So do that. Just share that quickly. You don't need to check that too much. Um, now, one of the interesting things um, about prophecy is that we don't actually need to understand it or, you know, we don't have to add to it to make it sound fancy or anything like that because we're just messengers in this. We're just passing on a message from God. Uh, and so it will make sense to the person who's supposed to hear it. Um, so obviously test it using that ABC. Is it affirming? Is it biblical? Is it Christ-like? And then simply pass it on in a, a sensitive and loving way um, without feeling the need to add to it or over explain it. And you know, God can use that um, to strengthen, encourage and comfort us. And trust me, um, one particular thing that I've learned a lot with prophetic and with prophecy is that you grow in confidence as you practice it. Um, so for example, I can't tell you how many times I've had a picture in my head or a word in my head from God um, that was supposed to be for someone and either I've told them and they really needed to hear it and were so thankful um, that God was saying that to them or I didn't tell them and somebody else walked straight over and said exactly what was in my head and I was like, oh my gosh, that really was from God. <laughs> so trust God to speak to you and to those around you through his Holy Spirit and then act on it and share that with love and with faith. Um, so what I'd like us to try um, right now is I'd like us to try a little prophetic exercise. Um, and it would just help us to, you know, give it a try and get used to um, receiving things uh, and then passing them out without really overthinking it. 
Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to give us some prompts to go off uh, and I want you to just go with the first thing that comes to you uh, and then I'm going to ask you to post it in the comments as well. Uh, and remember, you know, it doesn't have to make sense. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to read too much into it, um, but it should be encouraging, strengthening and comforting. So let's begin by just settling and stilling ourselves um, ready to receive and hear the word of God. So. Just make yourself comfortable and relax. Slow down your breathing, kind of bring it into a rhythm. You can focus on an object if it helps you to focus. And just let your thoughts uh, pass and drift away. Just be still. God, would you speak to us now through your Holy Spirit? Let us hear and recognize your voice. And let us speak your word over each other, uh, encouraging, strengthening and comforting each other in your name. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Amen. So now that we've stilled ourselves, try not to overthink this or deliberately search for a particular answer that you want. Just listen to what appears in your mind. I want you to start by imagining or picturing an animal. Just take the first thing that comes into your mind, the first animal. Now just hold on to that a moment. Now I want you to think of three words or phrases that you would associate with that animal. Again, just kind of let the first three things that come to you appear in your mind. They might be words or they might be like short phrases. What are three things associated with that animal? Now I'd like you to write those three words or phrases in the comments section. Um, don't worry too much about the animal, just the words or phrases. When you see them appear, um, take a look at the comments and just see if any of them like draw you in. Um, is there any that seem to just really speak to you in particular? You know, this could be God speaking to you or guiding you through any of them, but obviously check it um, with the ABCs. Is it affirming, biblical, Christ-like? And if nothing speaks to you, then that's fine. You know, this was just to help us get into the practice of, you know, hearing things, receiving them and sharing them. Um, but if something did speak to you, I'd really love for you to send me a message after church online um, so that we can, you know, maybe try and work out what God is saying. And we're going to move slowly into a time of prayer and our leaders in prayer. God, thank you that you love us and therefore always want to be with us and speak with us. And thank you, God, that you do that through your Holy Spirit, given to us as a result of Jesus' death on the cross for us and for our sins, so that we would be reconnected to you, God. God, thank you that you are with us and that your Holy Spirit works with us, within us and around us. God, help us to see and hear more of you in everything, in the Bible, in Jesus, in the Holy Spirit, in the prophetic, in the people around us and in the world. God, help us to be more open to hearing from you in different ways and help us to be more attentive as we listen carefully for your voice. 
God, help us to get better at recognizing and knowing your voice and when you speak. And God, when we think we hear something from you, um, for someone else, give us the courage and the faith um, to speak your truth, your life and your love into their lives. Help us to share what you are speaking with others uh, and with confidence. So let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Um, the words will appear on screen as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So thank you for giving that a try, uh, and especially for being willing to just share what might have been said in the comments section, because um, it takes courage to actually put this stuff into practice. Um, and I'd just like to reiterate again that if you think you may have heard from God tonight, um, I'd like to encourage you to do two things. Firstly, test it using that ABC thing. Is it affirming? Is it biblical? And is it Christ-like? Uh, and secondly, um, I'd love to hear about it. Send me a message because, you know, it'd be, I'd love to help you try and work out um, what God might be saying uh, in that and to your kind of circumstance and to your future. Um, if you want to get in touch with me um, about that or about anything else, then feel free to send me a message on Facebook. Uh, you can find me, Rob Cooper, in the comments section. Um, alternatively, you can send me an email at rob at hopefamilychurch.co.uk Now next time out at Church Online we're going to finish our series on how to hear God um, by exploring how to hear God in the world including things like in creation and in people. Um, so make sure you join us next Wednesday at 8pm UK time uh, live on Facebook and premiering on YouTube and other than that um, I hope you all have a great week and I hope to see you at Church Online if not sooner. Bye!